Hello, Catherine. This is Roderick. Roderick, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much again for uh, joining today's podcast. Oh, it's a pleasure. Well, I know our last podcast, we talked all about the military and sort of how uh, that led to, uh, you know, uh, the building of pleasure boat, more pleasure boats and having relationships with uh, different, uh, different groups that uh, brought uh, additional contracts and opportunity. But, um, you know, and there's nothing better than, than word of mouth sales and referrals and things like that. But you guys were also pretty well known for being experts in, uh, in marketing in your day. And I've, you know, I've seen you, you know, you've graced the cover of so many, you know, magazines and, and books and, and things like that. Um, do you, I know I apologize for asking it this way, but <laughs> do, you, do you know what you were doing back then in marketing and, and all of that? <laughs> Well, um, I don't think, I, I probably didn't know anything about marketing, but I realized that uh, what counted most of all was to build the best product that could be built. And uh, I wanted to build a fast racing boat that had the comforts of a yacht that was stable that was seaworthy, reliable, basically the best boat in the world. And I think that was my vision, my concept. And I wouldn't spare um, in the quality of the lamination, the construction. And I remember very well, um, I'm sort of coming out of your subject a bit, but... That's okay. You remember... My husband died uh, in 1990, and I was alone running the yard. And everybody said, well, 10 cents on the dollar, she's, she's never going to make it. And the yard will be sold. And, of course, that irked me. Um, and I thought, no, no, of course. Although I'm a woman, I can, I can do this. And I love my boats, and I have a passion for this, and I can do it. So one day, when um, the engineers put, launched a boat, and um, I saw it was listing. And I said, why is this boat listing? And they said, well, we can't figure it out. We've gone through everything. It's the same as before, and it's just listing. But don't worry, we can put some lead on the other side, and we can compensate the list. And I said, no, no, this, this won't do. And so I got on the boat, and I remember sitting in the bilge and trying to figure out why this boat was listing. Right. And I'm sitting there, and I realized that the generator, which is normally right in the keel in the center of the boat, was off center by not much, maybe four or five inches. Right. And I said, something is wrong here. Move the generator. And we moved the generator and everything was fine and the boat was no longer listing. And so I'm just giving you this little a anecdote because it's the sense of absolute perfection. We wanted to do it right. And I learned after the fact that many people do, you know, compensate a list by putting lead in the boat on the other side and so forth. But I really wanted to build the best quality boat. And there was a sense of perfection. And I think that because the product is so good and because of my absolute in attention to detail and quality, that we received this reputation. And that from word of mouth, people said, which is the best boat? I remember a client came to see me one day and I said, but, you know, how do you know about Magnum? Oh, I went to all the different boat owners in Saint-Tropez in the south of France and asked, tell me, what would you like to buy and why, what, what do you think is the best boat? And I especially asked, he said, the captains. And the captain said, well, if we had the money, we would buy a Magnum. And that's why I'm here. I want a Magnum. Right. And I think the word of mouth went also... Right. That's okay. Sorry. We, that's okay. We all have our phones ringing. And our phones ringing. That's okay. So um, the word of mouth also went to the press 
and the press wanted to know why people were buying magnums. And I think I think the the press and the journalists were also impressed by by Magnum. And uh, so we did sea trials, and you will have read probably many of these reviews of sea trials with Magnum, that Magnum was just an absolutely incredible boat and would go through the seas. And, and uh, we had helicopter shoots, and uh, we ran through huge waves to all the way to Bimini and back. And uh, it's very exciting. And it was exciting not only for me, it was exciting for our clients, but it's also exciting for journalists who cover an absolutely extraordinary boat. And I think it wasn't so much a talent of marketing, but uh, our concept of perfection and, and building the best boat and being totally without compromise that convinced not on our clients, but I think also the media and the journalists that um, that we this was an absolutely unique and extraordinary boat, and then of course the, the boat the boat also looked good, which is important for for photographs. And and I remember maybe I'm getting a little long and no, sorry keep, about you, that. You, you're answering the questions I'm going to ask, so you just but, keep going. But um, I remember one day I was sitting in my office. And a German client who lived on in Miami on Star Island uh, came to me and said, "I want you to build me this magnum. I've always wanted a magnum. I want you. I want a magnum, but I want a Ferrari red magnum because I have a Ferrari and I want it to match my Ferrari." And I said, "Well, you want a red hull? No, no, you don't understand." I want an all red boat. I want a Ferrari red deck. I want a Ferrari red cockpit. I want the hull. I want everything Ferrari red. And I had never done that before. And I was a little worried about the sun hitting the deck and then the, the color fading. Sure. And so we did lots of studies with, with uh, Dupont to be sure that we had, you know, a sort of infra... Um, I don't know, a sort of protection, UV protection for the for the paint, so the mm -hmm. paint wouldn't discolor. Mm -hmm. And we built him a Ferrari red boat, which you probably have seen on magazine covers, and it was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And that was a very photogenic boat. And so, not because I had thought about it, I must. Right. I'm quite modest. I don't wouldn't say that. But I was pushed to build this boat for this client, and it was fantastic. We had a Ferrari red boat, and I think after that, I built many boats, all in different colors. I built silver boats. I built black boats. And they were just extraordinary photogenic. And today, you might forget, you know, that that all started, this trend started with Magnum. Now you do see colored boats, which actually... Yeah. You didn't see before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, well that was uh, a, an unbelievable uh, answer there, Catherine. And I think actually there was sort of a learning moment for, for um, maybe people today in marketing because you, as I said, uh, maybe in the intro about, um, um, you know, stories and stuff like that, but you definitely got your product and your story out through magazines and the editorial side, not just the advertising and marketing and all that. So when you jumped in to say, you know, there was the photo shoots and all that and the journalists enjoyed it. And so obviously um, your, your goal is to, you know, give them a great experience, obviously, that they probably have never had before, but then they're gonna write a great story. And you, you must have done that, I can't say hundreds of times, but maybe you did that a lot of times. Oh, yes, of course. I mean, mainly, you know, whenever we launched a new model or a new boat, and we always had a lot of fans also amongst the journalists. And and we also, you know, often they call us from a film production company, oh, we're launching a new product. We'd like to have a Magnum around or be on a Magnum. And uh, because Magnum is beautiful, it's sexy, it's fast, 
so it sort of goes very well together with with products that other people want to launch. For example, uh, I was given a few years ago a, a big, impressive brochure, which I had nothing really to do with, and I looked at it, and I said, what is this? This is a BMW brochure, but a really nice, fancy one, you know, right. big. And I looked at the cover, and I couldn't believe it. Here was this beautiful BMW, and next to it was the Magnum. And I turned the pages, and on every page you see a Magnum running. This was taken, I think, in Sardinia, so you see the Magnum running in the water, the BMW before, in front of it, behind it. You see you know, a wheel, for example, of the BMW. Then you see a porthole of the Magnum. You see the Magnum being hauled and you see these incredible huge huge surface propellers and they just felt that magnum was such an exciting product and that they wanted the bmw to be next to it you know right. so that was an incredible compliment sure absolutely well was there um as many opportunities for um, for for journalistic opportunities overseas compared to the United States, or was there any difference in how you did things, or how you marketed, or how you got stories uh, written about your about your boats? I no, I think I think you know the the press in 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 Europe and in America were about the same. They were just excited about the product. They were excited about the the visual of the product. You know, a bright red boat looks different than a white boat, you know. Absolutely. And in fact, one of my clients, a very, very wealthy, I would think billionaire Italian who could buy anything he wants. I mean, a huge, he could buy the biggest yachts in the world. Right. And instead, he bought a Magnum. 70, and later a Magnum 80. But anyway, he would tell me, you know, when I come into port with my Magnum, there are all these huge white yachts, much, much, much bigger than mine. And I come in with my Magnum, all the heads turn, because this is an extraordinary boat. It's so beautiful. It's so special. People look. Whilst if I had you know, a 40 or 50 meter yacht, no one turns around. They're, they're all the same. Right. But the Magnum, Magnum, Magnum is different. Magnum is special and everybody turns around. And I remember once many years ago, I arrived with my Magnum 70 in Sardinia in the, in the summer and it was around two or three in the afternoon at the dock in Porto Cerro. And nobody was around. And all the shutters are closed, as they are in the summers in Italian cities, you know. Right. And the boat, we had these incredible Italian engines, the CRM engines. And we arrive at the dock, and it would go, ta-dum, 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 you know. Right. And uh, by the time we had thrown the lines and I could get off, they were around us on the pier, oh, what, at least 50 people. And all, you see all the shutters opening. What is this? What is this? And everybody runs down to see. And people get excited. And can we come aboard? Can we see what it is? Right. And it's a very special, exciting, beautiful boat. So it doesn't, doesn't take much that to have it on the magazines, to have people talk about it. Because it's fun. It's pleasure. It's it's beautiful. Right. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, I'm sure there's uh, hundreds of stories like that. And uh, as I said, for a learning, learning opportunity uh, for many in, uh, in marketing and business that uh, may be taking that journalistic approach rather than uh, completely uh, spending all your money on uh, Facebook ads. And, and that's, today's, <laughs> that's today's terminology, a little bit different than, uh, than it was um, uh, a few years back. So, well, Catherine. Well, yes, but I, I just wanted to repeat what I said before. For me, I still believe that the product has to be good. And it starts with a quality product, you know. 
Absolutely. Very, very well put. Well, um, if, if, uh, if you'd like, I'm going to sort of wrap this up for today. And uh, I know we had a couple more topics coming up, but uh, maybe we'll save those for another episode. But I just wanted it to thank you again. It was a pleasure, Roderick. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. And I hope you have a good day. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Take care.